Ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Super Negotiate. It has been a while indeed since I dropped my last video, but I have not been sitting idle. In fact, over the next three to six months, I will be dropping weekly videos on spend analysis, e-procurement, contract management, everything related to digital procurement. I will be dropping case studies, tutorials, everything that you can imagine on Super Negotiate. If you haven't noticed, the world of digital procurement has become quite heated up in last six months or so. Every week, the new startups are dropping very much conversion to how open AI is being developed. And that tells you a lot that a lot of dependency that is being built right now is heavily dependent upon API driven culture. We'll talk about that separately, but we are here at Super Negotiate just to debunk a lot of marketing hype over the next few months or so. I am also very excited. I will be dropping that long awaited promise that I made of giving a free community tool on e-procurement that is e-sourcing, contract management, supplier management, and probably some of the really cool stuff that I have been talking about. Nevertheless, today's video is about the spend analysis challenge. A couple of weeks back, I dropped this Excel file that I will share with you in the link and i asked each one of you if you can take a jive at it let's see who comes up with the maximum cost savings and today i'm dropping the solution video for it in fact do this thing if you haven't taken a stab at it share it with your colleagues i challenge you to share it with your spend analysis providers as well let's see even if they are worth it amount the money that you're paying them let's see what they can tell you about this spend analysis solution Nevertheless, I haven't even solved it myself. So that will be the best idea if I can show you how I will solve this particular week one problem. If you don't remember, I will be dropping weekly challenges on the spend analysis series. Each week we will graduate from the basic to intermediate to a hardest level over the next three to four weeks. Let's see where we will end up. Yeah. Without further ado, let me share my screen and let me take a stab at how I will attempt to solve this spend analysis solution at Super Negotiate. So let's get started. And this is the data set that I shared with you guys. The first thing, if any spend analysis solution problem is thrown at me, I will never use a spend analysis solution. In fact, I'm a firm believer that you can get 60 to 70% of cost savings just using the Excel because it's the approach how you solve a spend analysis solution matters. Every spend analysis solution provided today will throw you in the sea of dashboards. You will have every visualization and they will also throw DIY solutions and you get lost, right? And that's what we are solving with this challenge. You need an approach step by step, a framework, how you should look at the spend data to really find those cost saving opportunities. So let's get started. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Let's see. Uh, we are talking about few columns. And remember, it's week one. The problem statement is really simple. Yeah. So this data that we generated from my data lab, of course, is purchase order date, some sort of items which have codified. No problems. Then suppliers, unit prices, quantity and pure value. And the challenge was how many cost saving opportunities can we find? So let's get started. My first step will always be to follow this particular magic quadrant and this is my first tip for you always look to have some sort of an approach so i'm looking for easy things right you can look for consolidation consolidation opportunities and we are talking about i'm gonna keep it truncated and we are talking about either i have high number of po's or i have high number of vendors Or both right that's the consolidation opportunity so this is what we will be looking through the second thing that i will be looking for is something what we call as hidden tail hidden tail basically means uh, where you have a contract but people are still buying outside of those contracts outside of contracts so this is what we call as hidden tail the third Let's say cost saving opportunity I would look forward is for unit price variances, meaning if you have a uh, variance, my bad, variance, meaning you have 
a range where a high range rather high range where you have a low unit price and you have a very high unit price yeah i'm looking for outliers here okay let's start with these three there's a bunch of use cases uh on the consolidation opportunities now here's the thing once you arrive at this approach any spend analysis tool provider will also say oh i have this dashboard i have this dashboard i have this dashboard i have also this dashboard and tell them i don't care about the dashboard all i want for you to tell me this is the cost saving opportunity and here is how to execute it let's change the way you test and buy your digital procurement software forget about number of dashboards all right so let's go into the first thing we'll keep an eye on these three use cases going back into the data that i shared with you very simple i insert a pivot table and then click ok and here we go now one assumption that i have made and the reason this is very simple at the moment is because i haven't spent any time in cleaning the data remember most of the time in spend analysis domain will be spent on cleansing the data because you may not have a right cleansed data to begin with and that's what most of the spend analysis provider will catch you upon they will say i have machine learning ai capability to really normalize the data uh, for example your company can be called abc limited or abc or abc ltd something and they will say my ai or machine learning will find it and consolidate it for you etc over the next few weeks i will show you that's really simple technique called fuzzy matching open source library very simple very easy to implement and it will find the clusters and the groups so don't fall this prey tactic of ai driven consolidation and normalization of data that's very standard data cleansing activity yeah don't pay for things that are driven by just the marketing understand how things happen and you can really simplify procurement spend analysis significantly coming back to our use cases my first approach is going to be very simple we are not going to solve everything in this lesson i'm going to focus upon only one problem here which is the first use case of how to identify unit price variances high range low range how to convert this into a cost saving opportunity and really enhance your spend analysis cost saving identification challenge so let's get started i will introduce to a concept of helper tables and this helper table concept something that i have used n number of time i still use it every single day and this is one single piece of advice that i would leave you with to make sure you're able to get 60 percent of cost savings just using excel you do not need any special tool so let's get started uh, one disclaimer though i am using a mac machine uh, to do this analysis there's little bit of differences between how excel operates on mac and windows machine for example when i will insert a pivot table on this data you would see i'm not able to see one option called add this to the data model which will appear on every windows machine when you're you are running an excel and that's a very very powerful feature to have something called data model i will take you through with that that option sometime in future or maybe in the next video but for now i think it's a simple use case we can start with it so what we are doing at the moment we are doing something called study the data or data exploration this is one step that i always advise to really understand what is going on we know which use case we are scanning through we don't know which use case will come out on the top but having a template helps significantly so these three are the use cases let's get started uh, i drop an item here that's number one then i want to analyze how many suppliers are there under each item so i drop the suppliers here so i can see there are about six items just rename this column to call products now here is one another very tactical advice because we are in a phase where we are trying to study the data with an objective to build a helper table and i will show you what helper table is i use it you may not want to use it but i use it i change the design of the layout of this pivot table to something called tabular form 
and I also choose to repeat the label labels, right? So again, this was the product and the supplier. Why I'm doing like this, I'll show you in a couple of minutes. Now, coming back to the use case, I am looking for unit price variance. Very simple use case, very standard use case. So now we'll drop unit price here two times. And then I will just right click on this and choose field settings and choose minimum. Similarly, I will right click on this, choose field setting and choose maximum. Now in front of you, I have the minimum price and maximum price for a product called one and the supply DC. So in one single line, I know exactly the items that I have procured. For example, product one, whenever I procured from supply called DC, what is the minimum unit price and what was the maximum unit price that was paid every spend analysis provider will sell you this as a dashboard and i just showed you takes less than a minute to get that insight in the excel so why are you paying so many thousands of dollars to them again coming back to this whole objective now i know exactly the purchase price variances couple of hygiene factors always arrange your data in ascending order or descending order i choose ascending so i know the minimum unit price will always come on the top etc etc and then after that i copy this table yeah into what i call it is a manual table if i put it this way paste it here zoom in a bit right and this is what i call as helper table why you will see in a bit helper table this helper table is what i use to generate all the recommendations so for me what i know these are the two suppliers for product one that can supply me at a minimum unit price right of 100 so i will say recommended supplier recommended suppliers I created this class so I'm going to repeat this for all the items here 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 and maybe four five six items here and then one item here and one item here so this is the class of the recommended suppliers now what will I do with this Intel again I'm just showing you one use case today only i will say intel here and i will just do a vlookup to really map whether the user has followed the recommended supplier list or not one quick hack and it's a very tactical hack could be you know a better way of doing it but this is what i do i just create a code here which is basically a concatenation of this item and supplier and that's pretty much it it's very tactical it has it's work it works for me you may find it different but then i just do a vlookup the value that i have to search is this and this so that it creates the code come back to the vlookup formula i go back to my helper table and just search code that i've just created with the recommended supplier Right. what this formula will do wherever the combination is appearing for example combination of supplier product and supplier it will search whether i have classified it as recommended supplier or not right zero means not recommended it's blank and whenever you will see a match it will say recommended supplier i'll just freeze the range and that's pretty much it now you see i have an intel of recommended suppliers right so now i just insert a new table or you can modify the previous table but i like to keep things clean i would say recommendations and all i know that i have to now let me just zoom in a bit good now i know based upon my intel remember zero means no matches and this is the recommended supplier i know which items i'm talking about and which suppliers i'm talking about and i know how much spend i have to negotiate 
for example i will just collapse this particular field one second so this is the amount of spend that i have to govern with these two suppliers so unnegotiated spend meaning i can bring the spend in with these two suppliers this is a business that this supplier is already getting i will make them as my approved pool suppliers and then for each approved pool suppliers this is the spend that i can offer them once they give me a better unit price rate for the consolidation aspect now i hope you understand the project that i was talking about this is the approach i don't need thousand insights it's very simple purchase price variation let's look at some other variations of the intel that you have generated the other intels could be the intel 2 why there's such a large deviation of this particular type so i would say intel 2 high price purchase price variation let's call it as ppv cases right and this could be true for most of the cases here now depending upon your analysis you can choose to divide for example this by this and then set up your threshold of i'm going to look at all the cases that are above five or above three and then you can say high ppv etc so for me i would not for the sake of this example I would not treat something one point let's say nine or eight as high ppv it's really high in practicality but given the example it's not really high right i hope you get the idea that becomes an intel 2 now intel 3 could be for example i go back to my pivot table that i have inserted and then i will say quantity right and then i can question my supplier my buyer that if these are the two cheapest suppliers why they you are awarding high quantity to these expensive suppliers right so this becomes my intel number three cost saving project number three re-optimization of volumes etc 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 and this could be true for each and every item that has been listed here so I hope you get the idea now of this helper table every time you have an insight just add a helper column create your codes accordingly and then map it back to the intel column of your principal file so that you have one recommendation table at the end of the day we have spoken a lot but over the next few weeks we are going to build on this helper table concept you have the data you have the link already from my last post do me a favor try to build your unit price variance analysis using pivot table nothing else and the challenge that i reminded you give it to your spend analysis provider see what they come back with yeah test them out they are not doing a good job and you are definitely overpaying for every spend analysis solution today they're really behind in terms of getting the buck out of the value that they should be delivering my name is Gaurav. I run a channel called Super Negotiate. We do everything related to procurement community, spend analysis, negotiation, digital procurement, and a lot about procurement and supply chain together. So I'll see you in the next spend analysis challenge. Till then, goodbye.